Hello everyone, welcome to Reef Tank Adventure episode number 36 and in this episode I am going to be talking about the importance of having a backup sump pump. Alright, so why do this video? Well the reason why is because yesterday I had a little bit of an aquarium emergency which is never a good thing to have in the evening and definitely put a damper on my evening plans. Uh, what I was doing was basically I'd unplug the sump pump and then plugged it back in and it didn't come on. Well, why is this a big issue? Well, first off, we know the importance of the sump pump for the filtration system. But also, without a working filtration system, we do not have a method to heat the main display tank, at least not very efficiently. Obviously, I could have put the heater elements up into the main tank and that would have, that would have done somewhat a good job, uh, especially using the power heads to circulate the water. Uh, but there would have been a lot of things that would have occurred. Protein skimmer wouldn't have been able to skim. There wouldn't have been water going through the refugium. And all of this water would have became stagnant very quickly. Alright, so my sump pump is in a Japanese model, a walkie uh, pump. Sorry about the shaky camera work as usual, but once again, I'm moving around a bunch to show you guys a bunch of things. And it is a Japanese made pump. And what the malfunction was, was basically calcium and other debris had built up inside the white part of the pump that you see here. And I realize not everybody has an Awaki pump. Uh, there is several different manufacturers out there that make external pumps, but this pump did clog up and that is why it stopped pumping. Basically what I did is I took these silver screws out of there and took off the white part from the pump and then scrubbed it out. Okay, I was lucky that that was the issue uh, because I called my local aquarium stores and really to no big surprise they did not have anything close to this style of pump. Alright, so you may have a sump pump that is in your sump, maybe a mag drive pump that just simply plums up using vinyl hosing. Uh, that is a very common way of doing business. And if that's the case, uh, you're probably going to be able to make corrective action if you have a pump failure easier than I was. Um, once again, if you're watching a lot of these videos before you end up setting up your tank, um, the fact that I had this shut off here and had a shut off in the back and had this check valve made a huge difference as far as the ability to take this pump out. I, all I did was took this, this is a union ball valve, so the left part of this ball valve is a union right there. I just took this loose, took the union loose, and I had the pump out of there. It took me about three minutes to make it happen. All right. But in the meantime, I didn't know really if I was going to be able to get this pump working again. And that's where I want to tell you that if you do not have a backup plan for a sump pump in place right now, you need to make that happen. Because, like I said, the, the problems with, with losing flow to your display tank, uh, you could definitely lose some livestock in the process. So what I ended up doing before I took the pump out was I, I came up with the backup plan. And the backup plan involved basically getting my protein pump, protein skimmer pump out, and realizing that the outlet of the protein skimmer pump was able to hook up to some extra vinyl hose that I had. And I'm going to show you where I'm keeping it. This vinyl hose that I have curled up in the back here, that hose connected to that protein skimmer pump. And I was able to take my protein skimmer out of here completely, put my protein skimmer pump in there with the vinyl hose, run it up the outside of the tank, and then zip tie it onto the cross members and put it down into the tank. All right. So that was, that created actually a pretty sufficient amount of flow um, to keep the sump flow working but because of the design of my um, sump here 
I still needed to provide flow to my refugium, which is located in the back. And most of you that have seen the previous videos know that, that the uh, refugium is located here in the back. So I had to use like a little, um, a little pump with another hose to basically dump water into that refugium so that I would not lose all of the uh, organisms and life that the plants and uh, algae that's located in my refugium. All right, so, uh, you know, kind of just saying how I fix the problem, but it's going to be a different solution for you. Um, you need to come up with that solution. You need to develop that backup plan. Maybe that backup plan is ordering another pump. Uh, but these pumps are expensive. My long-term goal will be, uh, especially as this pump ages, it's only six months old at this time, but as this pump ages and gets some time on it, my solution will be to order another pump like this one. All right, And that way I'll have one in the box, tested, ready to go, ready to be plugged in, and ready to, to replace this pump in case of a failure. And one of the things that I did do that I also want to point out to you is it actually ended up being a opportunity to improve things a little bit. When I had installed this pump, I did not realize that the white collar there, or didn't think about it or didn't investigate it far enough, that the white collar there is able to be turned and basically able to be turned so that the, the outlet, which is this part right here, is able to be angled whatever direction that you really want it to be. Okay, so what I had ha what I did was I had mounted some metal brackets onto these ears right here to basically support it because it, the outlet was not heading the direction that I wanted it to. Okay, so when I took it apart, I put it back in in place to basically the location that I needed it to be located for the outlet. And then, and this is a little helpful tip, if you want to really silence your pump, use some of these easy movers. These are those little coaster foam padded uh, easy movers. And what I did is I put one there, and then I'll show you on the back side, I put another one back, or two of them actually back here, all right? The pump is extremely quiet now, as you can hear on the audio. You can hear me very easily. Uh, you don't hear the pump running all that loud. It is extremely quiet. I'm going to actually move the phone a little bit closer to the pump and then be quiet for a little bit so you can hear. So very quiet now. And it wasn't this quiet before when I had this bracket that was basically... Uh, just resting on this hard rubber here that just kind of amplified everything. So yeah, definitely give that a try. If you want to make your pump a little bit quieter, try putting some of these uh, plastic rubber foam uh, coasters underneath here that are used to move furniture. And uh, I think you'll have a pretty good result from that. Alright, so that is it for now. Thank you for watching. And definitely prepare yourself for a situation where you need to have a backup plan everybody uh, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and thanks for watching